How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Craig. Hey, thank thank you very much uh, for speaking with me. It, Eternal Beauty was uh, was a beautiful film. Thank you for speaking with me, and thank you for saying such nice things. That's so nice. Yeah, not a problem. Hey, so tell me where the original idea came from when you wrote uh, for Eternal Beauty. Uh, so it was inspired. It's inspired by a person that I grew up with. Um, that um, was living with this condition and um, uh, when I, I suppose, when I was about, yeah, about a couple of years ago, yeah, about five years ago, I started to realize how, how incredible she was and how strong she was and how, how powerful she was to just live with this and, and to navigate her way through life uh, carrying this. So, so, when you, so tell me how you wanted to approach the idea of schizophrenia because a lot of people kind of have, um, you know, the wrong ideas about what schizophrenia is. Like a lot of people think it's split personality, but that's not what it is at all. Right. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's very different to everybody, for everybody. You know, everybody has their own, their own version of it and their own reality. So um, I couldn't really talk about everybody when I was, when I was approaching this, it was only really about one specific person and that would be Jane. Um, and, you know, for her, um, when she comes off her medication, she starts to hear voices or, or, spiders appear out of the walls um and the, the phone seems to ring a lot and you know and and a certain somebody is on the other side of it so um yeah it was it was you know because it was informed or you know inspired by somebody that i was kind of staying truthful to that and one thing that was important for me was that there was humor in there because the real person is a very funny person like extremely funny and wicked sometimes in a beautiful way um and uh, I suppose in cinema, a lot of the time, that that doesn't seem to be the case with people. The way they 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 portrayed, it's it's very dark, and um, it'll be uh, maybe a genre piece where they're possessed or or, or something like that. So for, for me, it was about showing all shades of of a human, um, and and that was that that came from being truthful, really, from from the real person. Did you actually have to do any extra research to craft the character Jane for your film? 100%, yeah. So we, we had a consultant who was a professor of neuroscience at Cambridge, uh, Paul Fletcher, his name is, and he was, he was over the script from, from the first draft, really, and, you know, we kept sending it back and forth, and, and we would talk about it, and I certainly didn't, didn't want to be ignorant to it in any way, so we did as much research as we possibly could, um, and, and, and gave Sally as, as much information as, as she needed, really. Excellent. Tell, tell me how you wanted to craft uh, some of the um, schizo scenes that, uh, that Jane was actually going through, sort of like, you know, like Jane singing or Billy Piper in the spotlight, you know, smiling or, you know, where Jane was against the pe um, peeling paint wall. I mean, tell, yeah. tell me how, how you basically came up with those type of scenes to be included into a film like that because it's beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Um, uh, well, it's it's all to do with grammar, really, and what the grammar of the, the piece is going to be. And you know, um, uh, you know, people try and make movies to feel very real sometimes, but you know, the 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 grammar of film is immediately dreamlike. There is no way I can go from a wide of a building to being inside the building immediately. Like, there's no way I can do that. So therefore, when you, you put films together, they immediately feel dreamlike. So then, then taking it and um, let's say spotlighting Billy Piper or uh, spotlighting Sally, it's all about who is seeing the movie through, really. And you know, um, if if you're in in that person's head or you're 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 in their looking glass, then I suppose anything can happen. Um, so it was it was really it was really informed by you know whose perspective we're, we're, we're seeing and. Um, and uh, magical ways to tell that, rather than just seeing them. I, I think that's a, that's a talent of a, your directing style that was uh, portrayed very well. Oh, well, I really, really appre appre appreciate that. Now, why do you suppose Sally Hawkins was perfect for the role of Jane? Um, she is a superhero um, herself. Uh, she is uh, a master of the craft and such a kind person and very funny. Um, and then um, she just gets you straight away, uh, just with a look or with a hand movement. Um, it's no disrespect to anybody else, but there's nobody else that could have done this role, really. I didn't really want to make the movie without Sally. I've, I've known her for a long time. Um, and I, I just, I'm just blown away by how talented she is. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was her or nothing. 
Absolutely. She was very convincing and in this film. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well she you know, she was in character for the whole time, you know. And 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 it was I knew Sally beforehand, but obviously got closer to her during the during the picture. And then by the end of it when she came out of the character, it was it was it was so strange. It was like, oh there she is again. Now you also inputted a love interest uh, for Jane um, uh, Mike, uh, played by uh, David Doulis. Could you talk about his character and why it was very appropriate for for a film like this? Yeah, well, I, I'd loved I love I've worked with David before, um, and I love David, and um, uh, he used to be in a band before he became an actor. And so when I was writing this role of somebody that um, believed in conspiracy theories and um, uh, was angry that his band hadn't got the, 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 you know, the praise it deserve, they deserve. Um, I just know he's a very funny guy and he was, he's, he's a very, he's very, very honest in anything he does. So I knew that he was completely right. And I think it was right for the movie to have that character in it because, um, to know that she doesn't need to be with anybody is why it's right. It was never a movie that she would end up with somebody and that would make things better. That would be the worst movie in the world for me to make. Like, I would, that's not the, the picture I wanted to tell, you know, that she's independently strong um, and, and she can do her own thing. But of course, people meet people and people fall in love and sometimes that defines them when they're with them and sometimes it doesn't if they break up. But for this story, it wasn't, it was just seeing, seeing moments and seeing, um, uh, vignettes of how you know of, of certain cer you know certain things that happen to people and that wasn't to work out for her but it was it was important to see her go through that. Now you didn't really identify uh, Mike's um, illness or if I, if you did I, I missed it what 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 was his illness that uh, he was he was trying to be, be portrayed? I have no idea what Mike's illness is it's something that he only keeps to himself. <laughs> Excellent. And um, with the Eternal Beauty being your uh, sophomore film, because you directed uh, Just Jim, um, what did you learn um, that you wanted to do differently in your second film compared to your first? I learned to not put myself in the second one because I acted in the first one. I learned that there are better actors out there, so get, get, get them in. Um, uh, I, I, I learned many things, really. Um, the, uh, my first one, it was... I was getting all my influences out and I was, you know, experimenting and I was uh, finding a way to tell a story. And, and, and with, with this one, I, I feel like I found my voice and I know what kind of filmmaker I want to be and what kind of stories I want to tell. Um, and I just want to, you know, um, to, to help people in, in some kind of way if this story can. So I just, I suppose I learned to be more truthful to myself and just to, 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 to trust that I can do something, I suppose. <laughs> Excellent. Well, one, one more question from me. Um, I mean, we're, 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 we're in crazy times. Obviously, we're talking uh, via Zoom right now. But how are you staying creative and sane, you know, um, during times like this? Um, I, well, I'm not. Uh, well, I'm currently actually, luckily, I'm about to film another film in like a, a week or so. So that, in that way, I'm trying to stay creative. But through the lockdown and at the beginning of it, I really wasn't trying to stay creative or I was just trying to take it day by day, to be honest. Like, it's, it's such a it's strange it's just a strange world now that um, I was just trying not to put any pressure on myself because there's enough pressure from everywhere really, you know, to, with, with what's going on. And my mum was, was like a key worker and stuff. So I had, you know, enough worry going on. So I wasn't really staying creative, but I was just watching a lot of Netflix and a lot of reality TV shows. <laughs> Excellent answer. Hey, thank you very much, Craig. Hey, thank you for making this movie and thank you for speaking with me. Well, thank you for your questions. They were brilliant. And thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem. Next time. Bye now. Thank you. Bye.